Explaining the War in Ensemble Stars. This is H. E. Tenjoin. He is responsible for the war and the bullying and suicides of many students. Preface. I've only played this game for about nine months at the time of recording, but five months at the time I made these slides, but I will be adding additional info that I did not know. And I do not have the first game where most of this is from. I've only watched the anime, read a couple stories, and played the second game on the English server. There are probably better people out there that can explain this insane game, but I love explaining the lore of, th of this game to my friends, so I might as well make this at this point. Most of this info comes from reading the wiki, there's a hyperlink here, and watching the anime, and I will be referencing both. I do not own Ensemble Stars or any of its characters. Trigger warnings for suicide, bullying, cults, and manipulation. In this video, I will be explaining what is the war? Who are the five eccentrics slash oddballs? How are they affected by the war? And suicide? The war. The war happened in the first game and took place in Yuminosaki Private Academy. An idol school. Yuminosaki was known for its popular idols and most Yuminosaki graduates would immediately get hired by big agencies. Soon, a lot of students believed that it was enough to just have Yuminosaki on their resume and that they wouldn't have to work hard, causing a lot of them to skip classes and not participate in their idol activities. A lot of them also turned to delinquency and would damage property, litter, and start fights. This caused the school to lose credibility. Enter Eiji, who loved idols but could die at any time due to his poor health at the time. Though it's not like his health is any better, I think. I mean, he's not about to die, but you know. Upon joining the school, he was disgusted by how its students lazed around despite having perfectly healthy and capable bodies, becoming idols without talent or skill, affecting the idol industry. He decided to reform the school, stating that he would remove every little bit of pus and filth, and wash Yuminosaki Academy clean. He collaborated with his childhood friend, Keito Hasumi, who also wanted to reform the school, but couldn't due to how little power the student council had, and Sumugi Alba, who had befriended almost everyone in the school. The Five Eccentrics also known as the Five Oddballs. The Five Eccentrics are a group of five students who were designated by Eiji and Sumugi as part of a plan initially suggested by Kato and given concrete form by Sumugi. Eiji's tactic was to single out five specific students known as eccentric geniuses as the most talented to be the designated enemies of the student body. The Oddballs are not only geniuses in the idol field, but they are generally but they are generally able to excel in anything to which they put their minds. However, as individuals, their behavior and style of speech are quite unusual. While AG had decided on three of the members, Rei, Wataru, and Kanata, the last two, Shu and Natsume, were suggested by Sumuki out of genuine admiration when AG asked him for advice. In game, Rei is considered their informal leader. The five eccentrics are comprised of Rei, Sakuma, Kwatoro Hibiki, Kanata Shinkai, Shu Itsuki, and Natsume Sakasaki. Why were the five eccentrics made? Eiji knew that the students of Yuminosaki would rather blame anyone but themselves for their own behavior, so he had these five students scapegoated as the living embodiments of sloth and decadence in Yuminosaki. Word spread that these five were so talented, they did not work hard and instead used Yuminosaki as their personal playgrounds, tempting others to slack and causing chaos wherever they went. The student body began, began to blame these five as the reason why Yuminosaki students were no longer welcome in the entertainment industry and bullied them relentlessly. Of the five, the only eccentric to escape severe bullying was Natsume, whom the other eccentrics claimed they hid from public eye. Fine. With the five eccentrics established as a tangible enemy, 
The next phase of the plan was to socially execute each one in a manner that would make Aichi's underdog unit, Fine, seem like heroes fighting for the student body. Aichi capitalized on the student's desire to feel like heroes without actually doing anything, and how they were likelier to sympathize with a unit that appears like an underdog because the students viewed themselves as unfair victims of Yumanosaki's state of disrepair despite it being their own fault. Aichi made Sumugi the leader of Fine, as Sumugi was someone whom the students could relate to, someone without any particular strength, but was leading a unit against five ultra-talented geniuses and winning, proving that anyone could succeed if they work hard enough. This granted Fine a swell of popularity each time they defeated one of the eccentrics, and encouraged a violent and blind faith in Fine's cause. Sumugi knowingly and actively assisted with Eiji's plans, believing everything they were doing was a necessary sacrifice. This granted Eiji immense social power, leaving him nearly untouchable. So what did Eiji do? Eiji was made the student council president, which allowed him to change the school rules at will, as no student paid attention to which regulations changed. Eiji raised the minimum number number of members per unit to two, so the eccentrics who were being ostracized by others couldn't perform solo. The maximum number informally became five. Any more than five members and the cost to perform would be higher than any income made per life under Eiji's new rules. Though it is unknown when this was implemented, Eiji made it mandatory for all performance proposals to be submitted to the student council to the student council for approval giving the student council absolute authority over what kind of performances were allowed due to Eiji's wealth he held full independent control over what performances he could choose to fund without needing to appease sponsors or appeal to the staff's will at Kato's specific suggestion Eiji made club act activities mandatory with the intent of overworking the eccentrics, who would have to balance their extracurricular activities, their passions, and their now mandatory idol work. And, Eiji made the Dream Idol Festival System, or Dream Fest, where the outcome of the live is determined by who the audience votes for, in order to numerically handicap the eccentrics. As the Dream Fest system was the only official way to recognize unit accomplishments, this caused the eccentrics and eccentrics affiliated units who did not or could not participate in Dreamfest performances to be ranked at rock bottom. And even if they did perform, their talent would seem far less impressive after not being voted by the students who actively didn't like them, depreciating their performance abilities and allowing Fine to overcome the eccentrics through loopholes, not superior skill. How each centric, how each eccentric was executed. Shu. Shu was executed first, and probably took it the worst. Because Valkyrie's shows did not occur under the Dreamfest system, they now technically ranked at the bottom of the school hierarchy, which which forced Valkyrie into a corner. As he was obsessed with perfection, Valkyrie would lip sync to a pre to a pre-recorded song while they danced. This is actually because. Nazuna, who was like their main singer, I guess, had a really high voice, but it changed because of puberty, as it does. So they would dance to the songs before his voice changed. During their performance against Fine, the power cut out, revealing their secret and causing the audience, who already didn't like them due to Shu being an eccentric, to dislike them more. Shu broke following Eiji's execution of him. Nazuna would later defect and join Rabbit, but Mika remained with Shu and Valkyrie. The trauma of the incident caused Shu to develop the habit of speaking through his doll, Mademoiselle, after his defeat. She is hinted to be based off Kuro's dead mother, and he generally only speaks his true feelings through her. It appears to be disassociative identi dis identity disorder, which has been pointed out by Natsume. He and Mademoiselle lack disassociative amnesia, making their, 
making their case fall under other specified Disassociative Disorders OSDD-1 category. Kanata. During this time, he was still known as a living god who granted wishes to others. Kato's efforts to dismantle the belief of his godhood led Kanata to, to lose his following in the school, which led to a drop in his reputation. His execution was done by Kato's which was done by Kato's Akatsuki, was intentionally less brutal than Eiichi's methods and ended with Kanata and Chiaki performing together against them. Kanata ended up joining Rusetai after this. Kanata's family is a household that used to maintain a religion revolved around him as their living god. They granted wishes through their immense power and probable implied ties to the mafia. Ray. Ray was mostly physically absent during the events of the war, having been overseas both to try to find a cure for his little brother, Ritsu's weak, constitu weak constitution, and having been sent away by Eichi, who wanted him out of the way due to his strong influence. When he was abroad during the war, he was working on fixing problems in Yumanosaki Academy's overseas sister schools where Eichi had stirred up trouble. When he returned, he was weakened and unfit to fight so it is unknown if he had an if he had a specific execution execution live. His being away all the time meant that he couldn't protect Ritsu, causing him to break his promise and the relationship between the brothers to fracture. During the war, Ray's compulsion to help others was used against him. His execution conspired by Ritsu and Eiichi. Using Ritsu's advice, Eiichi intentionally caused trouble in New Minasaki's sister schools, Ray's compassion making him unable to not travel abroad to lend his help. After being worn thin from being dragged around the globe, the demand to solve problems far too great for a single individual weakened Ray. From then on, Ray resolved to change as a means to protect himself. He began to make efforts in distancing himself from humanity no longer meddling in others' personal affairs, and if he did, he would take a backseat approach. He begins to take on the persona of an old man. This new persona of Ray's grants him the image of feebleness, so people wouldn't demand or expect things from him. Natsume. Natsume was the first year at the time, and was defended from much of the fuss by the others, who were all second years, and thus sustained no metaphorical wounds from the war compared to them. Perhaps because of this, he feels more distant from the rest of them, and is more spiteful towards those who hurt them. At the end of the war, Natsume attempted to put together a plan to defeat Fine, but it was rejected by Wataru. He blames himself for having done nothing to help the older oddballs, and considers it a personal failure of his. Wataru. Wataru was the last eccentric that was fought during the war due to Eiichi's um, admiration towards him. He was assisted by Hokuto Hidaka, who wore a mask and hid his identity during the live. He was known as Hockey Mask on stage due to the necessity to have two or more members performing at once. Wataru stated that he sees the members of the Oddballs as true friends. Whom he cares and loves deeply, thanking Eiji from the bottom of his heart for creating the five oddballs, even if his intention was only to destroy it. Eiji had extreme difficulty in taking down Wataru, not wanting to do that to him, but Wataru hushed him and went on to perform with Hokuto. As predicted, Fine won and the destruction of the five oddballs was completed, but the end of Fine also began as every member's contract towards Eiji was now completed. Wataru joins current Fine after that. The Fine we've been talking about up to this point disbanded after the war. They will be referred to as X Fine from this point forward. X Fine and a summary of things so far. X Fine was the prime instigator of the war. Many of the things that happened during the war were due to Eiji's schemes. X Fine had many members but as Eiji described it, they used up each individual until their usefulness had run out. 
Each member of Ex Fine was bound by a contract of ages devising, which defined what functions they would perform and how long they would remain as a member. From the start, Eiji planned for Ex Fine to dissolve completely after the unit's final life against Wataru. At the very start of the year, in spring, Ex Fine had very little presence. Eiji was still sowing the seeds necessary to set up the eccentrics before the eccentrics were known as such, as the school's enemy and Ex Fine as the school's saviors. As hostility toward the eccentrics ramped up in the summer, Ex Fine made their debut with Shu's execution. As the no-name unit that had trumped over Valkyrie, Shu's unit that once stood at the top of Yumnosaki, Ex Fine became known as underdog heroes and was immediately met with a rush of support. As Ex Fine continued to strike down the undesirables of the school, including the other eccentrics, their popularity only increased. This was largely helped by the fact that its two major players, Hiyori Tomoe and Nagisa Ran, were idols of great talent and presence. Eichi and Sumugi, hard workers in their own right, performed su in supporting roles to ensure that Hiyori and Nagisa shined. Despite Ex Fine's immense popularity, its members were distant from one another. The four of them did share the same dream to improve Yumurasaki, and they valued one another as companions who fought alongside each other. However, because they were all bound by contracts, and Eiji was so focused on his desire to defeat the eccentrics, they could never truly come together as a unit. After Wataru's execution live show, its members split up in accordance, in accordance to their respective contracts. You trampled to death irreplaceable people in your life who could have become your friends. What a pity. This scene is from, I think, episode 11 of the first anime. And it just made me cry. And I have no idea why. But we're not done yet. Suicides? What students failed to realize while distracted by the eccentrics was that these changes, especially the Dreamfest system, were gradually culling the student body. As Dreamfest battles constitute a large part of each student's grade, students who could not or did not try hard were gradually unable to rank high enough in Dreamfest battles and were forced to flunk out of school. Most students were at a disadvantage in this system as they had not been holding their idle abilities and were suddenly thrust into a brand new grading system and performance format. Additionally, the large guild like units had to break up into two to five peop into units of two to five people, causing infighting amongst former guild mates, permanently permanently destroying relationships and causing dozens of minor civil wars within the school. Because the student council now had full control over what performances over what performances were allowed to be performed and what performances were worth through the Dreamfest ranking system, the student council gradually clamped down on creativity in favor of producing industry standard generic idols that fit the specific mold of entertainer the industry desires. Eiji's goal was not to cultivate idols, but to produce idols who, would, who could survive and succeed in the unforgiving entertainment industry, which punishes creativity. Most students lost everything during the tumult, leading many to drop out of school or commit suicide. Jumping from the school roof was the most common method of suicide at the time, and Yumunosaki has a graveyard on its premises, with graves erected in these students' memories. The consequences of the war remain fresh in the minds of the second and third year students, so much so that a student who goes to the roof is assumed to, co to be committing suicide. So what happened after that? While Yumunosaki's reputation was mostly restored as a result of Eiichi's initiative, most of the files and records that were kept regarding the events and units of the war were destroyed by Sumugi, the only active member of the library committee. As such, 
many of the first years are somewhat ignorant about the war, especially if their seniors do not disclose what occurred. Some of the second years are somewhat aware of what happened during the war, but many were too new to, Yum to Yuminosaki to fully understand what was going on at the time. Eiji, Kato, and Sumugi fully understood the gravity of their actions once the war ended, and they independently swore to never allow such bloodshed to happen again. However, H however, Kato and Sumugi expressed that they do not regret their actions during the war, they simply sought to do better in the future. Eiji dedicates himself to instituting order in, in Yuminosaki, as he believes order is necessary to cultivate fetching idols, and Sumugi dedicates himself to performing in his new unit, Switch, to, to encourage hope and wonder through Switch's performances. Conversely, Eiji frequently re expresses regret over what he did during the war, so much so that he has constant nightmares about it. In contrast to Kato and Sumugi, however, Eiji chose to become the emperor of Yumonosaki, stifling its creativity and ruling it through brute force and oppressive regulations, believing that carbon copy idols are the only idols with hope to succeed in the unforgiving idol industry. Though he had Kato's support once again, this time, Kato swore to strike down Eiji himself if Eiji's methods became cruel as they were during the war. And in the spring of the next year, Trickstar challenges Fine as part of Trickstar's revolution. This is where Ensemble Stars, the first game, starts. I hope that people don't go away from this hating Eiji, Taito, or Sumugi because this game isn't that black and white. There aren't really villains per se. So I hope that you don't just take this video as, oh, this is why Eiji sucks. And I hope that you do read more stories on your own and just decide for yourself yeah god i've been recording this thing for like maybe two hours i'm so tired